so previously that we are done with uh, all this stuff and in this session we are going to see the numpy okay and then we will switch to the pandas and then matplotlib in the numpy we also have a lot of programs which is more than python in basics of the python okay so let us concentrate in all these things i'm going to open all these things so guys almost this looks like whatever that i'm going to show you in numpy it almost looks like the python okay so let us uh, um, complete these things as soon as possible so that we could complete this part by tomorrow by then part tomorrow hmm? see the main difference that we should observe here is that we are using a, a package called numpy import numpy as np import numpy as np okay and np dot array of i am a numpy is a statement that i have given in an array and this array is going to be printed now np dot care dot add of x comma y let us see the execution see i'm a numpy program okay data of numpy program so i just wanted to do the multiply multiply numpy comma five what happens it will replicate okay five into five 25 characters this is what it is representing capitalizing okay first letter is capital okay split am a numpy program spread some converting into a lower case okay this is converting into an upper case equaling giving your false value false why because i am is different and numpy is different not equal yes true it should give it true so if you can see here np dot array bet a bet alphabet okay np dot care dot count x comma bet okay So here, you can see that x comma bet array of one comma one comma one <clears throat> means this represents whether the bet is there existing with the all these three array elements or not for example if i'm going to execute the second stop you should see that abet is not there in the first array element whereas it matches to the second and third array elements whereas the last one will match up only the last elements okay np dot care is numeric look no it is not numeric hence it is going to be false and our find of x comma bat you can clearly see wherever it is identifying the value it is going to show you zero okay 
pet you can see it is zero and it's one is difference and five is difference and it is calculating this bet is one character okay and all for bet and you will see zero wherever it is so this is nothing but called a index substring information okay where it will return the highest index in the string okay why because here you can understand three array variables or three array elements will consist the associated element whatever that we are trying to find within that particular elements r find represents to verify the elements within the variable array variable called x okay so this is a substring right b t is a substring zero is the substring index highest index that we can say and this is a bet okay so if you can bet the very first one okay you can see a bet you can't find it over here hence it is minus one and you can see here it is a zeroth index and you can if you can see here a bet it is minus four okay it's not minus four one two three this is the fourth index that you can observe here where it you could be able to identify this okay here you did not identify minus one alphabet here you did not identify minus one which is an alphabet here you could find that so the index would be zero okay all of you understand this part so this is the string functions anyhow let me just go back okay i just wanted to highlight the advanced indexing <clears throat> but before that let us see the data types let me just uh, make the arrangement creating the arrays indexing and slicing advanced indexing arithmetic operations before that array iteration arrow manipulation okay and uh, mathematical operations linear algebra hmm. matplotlib in numpy string functions broadcasting statistical operations sorting and searching operations this is how so now let us take a look at creating before creating as a data types so guys the numpy is a very important package in the python very important it's not a package it's a library actually okay so this library in order to work with this library you have to import this library and this is an alias name that we are going to use so let us see the different types of data types x of values these values you can see identify 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 x dot data type which would show you x is equal to np dot array one two three four five float whenever it is represented as a floating data type you could see the data as 1.2.3.4.5 point, 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 point something like this so x dot d type what kind of data type is this floating type okay and next one true comma false it's a boolean type 
okay what is the boolean type here true comma false whatever that we have given okay so here you can see the multiple string format so this is numpy okay see here i have given something called a j is equal to 2 so generally the solve solve np dot array i have given some complex data types where j is imaginary okay now let us see this is a complex data type if you just wanted to execute this all you can see if you want the real values you could see why because imaginary values have been deleted okay where the j is equal to zero understand all of you understand this part anusha ashok narayana ram dinesh sunil suresh are you all good so far creating arrays see 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 see numpy deals with mostly numerical stuff mostly numerical stuff it is not said that we are not going to work with the strings but still it is all mostly with the arrays remember that one okay so here import numpy as np okay and also you have to observe here one more thing that a where i have given as one comma two comma three comma four which is a floating type and also i can observe what is the type of the data hmm? it's an array data type numpy dot nd array n dimensional array so how many dimensional is it one dimensional what is the state what is the shape of that four comma nothing okay represents the shape of that particular array length of the array four okay so now i have given i have provided a two sets of elements in the array comma integer type now i execute it it looks like a matrix model and it is a type of n dimensional array and how many dimension is this two dimensional what is the shape two comma four two by four matrix almost literally okay two dimensional two comma four matrix length two means two array elements here i do have three hmm? let us see this part what is the type of c it's an n-dimensional c represents this one an n-dimensional three-dimensional no it is still two-dimensional okay c dot shape three by four why because in order to represent the three-dimensional you have to give an individual separation of all the entities okay but still it is still showing the two dimensional array we should wait let us see i should see this one as a three dimensional why because this is uh, something like this and the n dimension should be Of course, yes, this is a three by four matrix, which is representing exactly, uh, which is representing a three by four matrix, which is a two dimensional matrix. And now the length of C represents three. Okay. I will show you that 
n dimensional matrix and n dimensional in the sense like three dimensional also we will see that here actually i have uh, commented this as a uh, creating a three dimensional array but this is not a three dimensional array i'm sorry i just want to correct this one okay So now we can access the values of the above array C of 3, 1, comma 1. We know how we can add, access the elements of a matrix 2, comma 0. Hmm? 2, comma 0, second row. Let me see the matrix. 0, 1, 2. Okay. Of course, this is a three dimensional array actually. Okay. I'm sorry. Here, why it is showing you the n dimension is 2? Because it starts with a 0. It is not something like R programming language, it starts with a 0. So, hence, a 2, com 0, uh, 2 comma 0 represents. Here you can clearly see 2 comma 0 represent this is the matrix 0, 1 and 2. Okay, 0 represents it will start with the 0 either it is a column mode or a it's a column even if it is a column or a row it starts with the indexing of 0. Okay, now let us go ahead. C dot re tree shape of 4 comma 3. See, 3 by 4 matrix can be converted into the 4 by 3 matrix. Okay, this is where that we can use the function called a reshape, where you can use the reshape function in order to change the way how the matrix can be represented. So D is equal to something and D is equal to something like this. Okay. So anyhow, uh, this is uh, how this four, four by three matrix arrangement would be look like. See, there is something called a range. Okay, you can see when you say a range of five, it starts from the zero. Okay, and ends with the four. A of two represents zero, one, two, second value itself. Remember, in the R programming language, it is quite different. It will not start with zero, it starts with one. Okay. Here, if you can take a look at this part, B is equal to NP dot arrange one comma 20 comma five. Okay. One comma 20 comma five represents, it will be an incremental order of five till 20. So let us see the values. One comma six comma 11 comma 16. So B of two represents, what is the value guys? Huh? What is the value? 11. So here we do have something called the line space. 0, 1, 5. We have got the three different values in the function called line space where this could be used in order to divide the number of points. Take a look at this one. 5 is fine number of points and you divide it 0 between 1 if you are going to divide by 5 you will get the five different elements 0 0 0.25 0 0.5 0 0.75 and 1 in the same way using 7 you can divide this one even see somehow like this you can use the line space function so here 3 by 3 comma 1s See, once is another function within the array. So this is why the NumPy library is very much famous. We have a lot of functions inside that. It will make our life easy while we are doing the programming. Okay, so np.once 
represents 1 comma 1 comma 1 comma 1 zeros 2 by 3 matrix this is 3 by 3 matrix np dot ones of 5 will give you the 5 by 5 1 by 5 five elements inside that when i say i it will give you the 3 by 3 matrix okay when when i say i of 6 it will it will give you the 6 by 6 matrix okay see when, whenever you say i you will get all the diagonal values are one even in the 6 by 6 matrix you can see all the diagonal values are one okay did you all understand creating arrays Hmm. Now let us see the array iteration. Okay. In the array iteration, import numpy as np. Now let us see this is the array we have in front of us. In order to iterate through that array for i in a, print i. Okay, so you have got everything. Okay, so here this is a one more in, in integer model. Okay, This will show you only two. Okay, why? Because this represents a two by two matrix. Okay. Here you can see like I'm doing a calculation i comma j in A print i plus j. Okay. Here we do how to understand each and every element has taken as a iteration and it has given a calculated value of all the values 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 4, 7, 5 plus 6, 11. Can you understand that did we initialize the value or a variable anywhere here before we are implementing this for loop? That is a speciality in the Python. You never defined the i over here. You never defined the i comma j anywhere. We have directly initialized. We have not declared. We have directly initialized by assigning that to a values in the a and we printed that. And a is equal to np of array. Okay, so if you can take a look at this, okay, we have this array for yes, we are we are intimating that it is an integer type. If you give it as a float, it will consider it as a float type of variable. Okay. So here, this is how it is printing the i, which is assigned. And now x plus y plus z is going to see if I'm going to execute how the how the values are going to be given. Six. 15, 24. It's a added value. So I just want to do the multiplication. Okay. 
understand this part all of you all of you understood this here you should give the print statement otherwise even though you don't give the print statement in a general variable format it will give you the output okay this is a for loop right we have to make this one to behave in a different way rather than assigning a variable and printing a variable something like this okay all of you are good Okay. All of you are good with this. Creating arrays. See, it is nothing but accessing the values over here. So let me show you the C. Okay, first of all, this is a C, which is going to be a three by four matrix. Otherwise, instead of I'm telling you as a matrix model, let me tell you three by four array, an array with a size with the size three by four. I just want to access the one C one comma one. Okay, what is the C one comma one? The first row is zero. And this is one. Okay, one comma. This is the first column is zero. This is one, and it should show six. Okay. So this is how that we can go ahead with this. Are a manipulation. See, we have a. This is this a two by three matrix? Shall I say it? Otherwise, two by three array, right? See, we have something called ravel. Ravel is a function which will flatten your array. It will it will make your array to be get flattened in a single row, one by six matrix or one one by six array. In order to convert your A, means like transposing an array, like two by three into three by two. Look, transposing, doing a ravel on transpose. See, the entire values have been changed. One comma four comma two comma five comma three comma six. Reshape. You wanted to reshape again. The shape entirely going to be different. One comma four comma two something. See the values how we picked and how we transformed. This is what the manipulation here. You want to arrange four by three by two. Look, see four by three by two, whichever will give you what you what it will give you three two six six four twenty four twenty four twenty four value itself is exclusive zero it has to be zero it starts with the zero and ends with the twenty three okay reshape of this one twenty four gamma nothing. Okay, you want to see this shape also? Let me show you. Let me show you the A. This is how. Okay. 
Okay. You can also see the shape of the B. 4, 3, 2. Okay. Here the A, the, the A represents somewhere like this. Okay. And you tried. This is a reshape. And then see the A. And now you say A dot shape. Did you find any difference over here? I have arranged the values four in four by three by two represents the value which is 24 and p dot a range of 24 represents zero to 23 values. Okay, zero comma one comma till 23 values where you wanted to apply the reshape function. What you have did earlier in the same way here okay with 4 comma 3 comma 2 how you how did you get the values does it reshape the values here you are using the arrange okay where that your values will be in a sequential order I have raveled here. See, you have to observe here. I have raveled. When I raveled, the data is in a sequential format. But still it has transport, right? See. Shall I use transports then? Otherwise, as you said, Sunil. Here I just wanted to transpose after the reshaping. I just want to go ahead with a dot t. Why the transpose is not working my for me? Huh? Arrange is different. The array definition which you have done is different. Array is different. Arrange is different. Arrange is a value, just values. It's not an array. You have to understand that part. Guys, this is not an array. That is an arrangement of values. Here, this, this represents an array. This is an, of course, this, that, that we can say like here. See a dot n dimension one. Okay, I just want to show you dot shape. Twenty four comma nothing. Okay, this is not an array actually. Hence, you can't do the transpose. And you cannot make it work with the reshape. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Fine. So I'm going to assign a new stuff here then. B is equal to. Okay. See, when you are going to make such a kind of arrangement, definitely that should not be an automatic arrange function that you are going to use. Right or wrong? Hmm? Otherwise, they, there is no sense, right? See, this what arrange is doing. This arrange is going to generate an array of elements which is in a sequential order. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create something called an np dot array.
okay i just want to say being this is my array otherwise let me keep something like this two three four hmm? and b dot t no b dot uh, shape let me see first and then b dot t first let me see the b okay and what is the shape of the b okay and what is the transpose of the b it will not do the transpose Okay, you want me to uh, do a reshape hmm? as you asked. Hmm. How you want me to do it? Two by two. Okay. Is this fine? Now you see. Now you see the B. Now, now, now I, I want you to see the B dot T. See, the transpose will never work unless and until you give it something directionally. Along with the array that you have mentioned and it is multi-dimension. Okay. All of you understand this part. When you have a single dimension, you can't make it. Maybe it's an already flatten array. Okay. Earlier, we have just modified the existing. See, the transpose is, is already working here. And also it is working here even. You have to understand this. Transpose, already it is working even here. See? Okay. Here it is not working, right? Let me show you b dot so let me show you the b this is the array of values hmm? i want to see the shape this is the shape and i want to transpose this data okay this is not working here but the reshape will work okay here if you go ahead here This is the reshape. What about the transpose then? Transpose is not working. Look. Here, I want to show you something. Reshape of 4, 3, 2. Take a look at this part. No, I just want to show you. Four comma three comma two. All of you understand this one. Only thing is when it is a sequential values or a flattened array, you can't make a transpose. Okay. The earlier dimensional matrix, whatever that you have used the ravel, and you can convert a two by three matrix or two two by three dimension will into a three by two dimension but not the directly given number of values that you can convert into a transpose okay sunil are you clear okay Okay, let us stop here and uh, we will just uh, come again. We will we will clear this uh, NumPy and Pandas tomorrow session. Okay.